Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about humoral immunity. So we know that immunity is a very important question from an examination point of view and humoral immunity itself can be asked as a short note. So we will see how we can write this answer for the exam. So in the introduction we have to write about basically about immunity. What is immunity? So the definition is immunity refers to the resistance of the body to pathogens and their toxic products. And you can write the classification of immunity which is innate immunity as well as acquired immunity. Innate immunity can be non-specific or specific and acquired immunity can be active or passive. Now since humoral immunity is a part of acquired immunity, we have to write the definition of acquired immunity also. So acquired immunity by definition is a resistance that an individual acquires during his lifetime. Now uh, the acquired immunity is basically the function of the body's lymphocytes. So all these points must be there in the introduction of the answer. Now since here we said that it's a function of body's lymphocytes, we have to write about the development of acquired immunity. So uh, we know that the primary lymphoid organs in our body are bone marrow, thymus and the lymph node. So how does lymphocytes develop? Lymphocytes develop from hematopoietic stem cells present inside the bone marrow. So there are two classes of lymphocytes. So the first type is developed from uh, they develop into B cells that is from the bone marrow they uh, reach into the bloodstream where it is converted to mature B cells and then they are they move on to the lymph node and is stored as matured B, B lymphocytes. So it is called B because it was first uh, found out discovered in the bursa of birds that is why it is called B. Now the second type of lymphocytes they move on to the thymus mature inside the thymus to form the mature T lymphocytes which again then move on to the lymph nodes. So basically there are two pathways by which our hematopoietic stem cells can move. One is by a, it can develop into B lymphocytes and the other is can develop into T lymphocytes. And all these B and T lymphocytes are present inside our lymphoid organs. So when an antigen enters the B lymphocytes will be activated to form plasma cells and they form antibodies. So that is one method of response to antigen and the other method is the T lymphocytes can be converted to activated T lymphocytes and then they can uh, kill the antigen. So that is another method. So these two responses are called the humoral immunity and the cell mediated immunity. So if the body respond to the antigen by producing antibodies that is called humoral immunity and the response by which the T lymphocyte is activated is called cell mediated immunity. So here we are going to deal about humoral immunity. So the immune system of the body responds to the antigen in two ways, humoral or antibody mediated immunity as well as cell mediated immunity. Now we will see the uh, more about humoral immunity. So it is an immunity mediated by antibodies and the basic steps of humoral immunity are presentation of antigen and activation of B cell, differentiation of B cell into plasma cells, proliferation of plasma cells and antibody production, killing of invaders by antibodies that include activation of the complement system as well as formation of the memory B cells and subsequent immunological responses. So the, these, are, these are the basic steps. Now when it is asked as a short note, you have to elaborate on each of the step. So we will see how. So the first step is presentation of antigen and activation of B cells. So a B cell has to be activated by an antigen. So the antigen itself can activate the B cell because a B cell is an antigen presenting cell. So B cell can be activated directly by the antigen or it can be activated by an antigen presenting cells. So by antigen presenting cells we generally mean uh, macrophages or dendritic cells which process the antigen and then they present it on the on its MHC uh, receptor MHC antigen and then this antigen will be recognized can be recognized by the B cell. So that is another method of activating the B cell. And the third mechanism is this antigen presenting cells can produce interleukin 1 which in turn will attract this helper T cells. Now this helper T cells can in turn produce interleukin 2, 4 and 5 and activate B cells against that antigen. So this method of activation that is wherein the antigen presenting cells are involved this co-stimulation of helper T cells is necessary for proper activation of the B cells. Right? So this is how an B cell will be activated when an antigen enters our body. So to write when an antigen binds direct when an antigen binds directly to the receptors present on the surface of the B cells the B cell is activated. 
B cells are also activated when they come in contact with the MHC antigen complex presented by the APCs. And this is accentuated by co-stimulation from type 2 hypercells. So now at this stage the B cells are activated by the antigen. Now let's see what happens. The step 2 is differentiation of B cells into plasma cells. So on activation by the antigen the B cells will be converted to plasma cells. So the activated B cell enlarges in size and undergoes complete transformation to form plasma cells. Now what happens when plasma cells are produced? They proliferate and produce antibodies. So plasma cells undergo proliferation to form millions of plasma cells and they secrete a large quantities of antibodies. So we know the basic antibodies present in our body are IgE, M, G, A and D. So they produce a lot of antibodies which in turn will act against the antigen. And the fourth step is killing of the invaders by the antibodies. So how does these antibodies kill the pathogen? One is by neutralizing the antigen. So suppose an antigen, if it is a bacterial toxin, it can neutralize the toxin so that the body is made, it is harmless to the body. Okay. Second step is immobilization of microbes. So these antibodies can coat the microbes and make them, render them immobile so that they cannot uh, progress or they cannot infect the body. Third step is by activation of the complement system. So how does activation of complement system kill the pathogen? We will see it later. But anyway, when complement system is activated, itself can kill the antigen. The fourth method is precipitation of antigen. So suppose if it is a soluble antigen, these antibodies can make them insoluble so that they can be phagocytosed by our uh, phagocytic mechanism like neutrophils or monocytes. Right? And the fifth mechanism is by facilitation of phagocytosis by opsonization. So if the antibodies, when the antibodies coat these pathogen, they will be, this, this process is known as opsonization. And this will make the phagos, phagocytosis by these macrophages easier. So that is another method by which these antibodies will facilitate destruction of the pathogen. And finally, formation of memory B cells. So B cells, the activated B cells are not only converted to plasma cells, but they are also converted to memory B cells so that when an when a next infection by the same antigen occurs, there can be an enhanced response to that antigen. So this memory B cells are responsible for the secondary immunological response. So these are the basic steps of humoral response. Now we have to see the different types of humoral response. So uh, when we say types of humoral response, there can be a primary as well as a secondary response. So depict this, you can draw a graph which shows the days on the x-axis as well as the antibody titer on the y-axis. So suppose an antigen enters the body, the body will respond uh, by producing antibodies and this is known as a primary response. So you can see that it is slow and it will take days to weeks to produce this primary response. But when a second antigenic exposure occurs, there will be a rapid response to that second antigen due to the presence of that memory B cells. So there are two types of response, one is primary and the sec other is secondary. Primary response is slow and is smaller, but the secondary response is faster and the antibody titer is also huge. So that is primary and secondary response. Next we will see about complement system. We had said that antibodies can activate the complement system in order to destroy the pathogen. So what is meant by this complement system? So complement system, so it's a group of plasma proteins that complement the effects of antibodies in destroying the antigen. So basically they are proteins which help the an antibody to kill the pathogen. So there are three mechanisms of complement activation. One is the classical pathway, other is the alternative pathway and there is one more method which is the mannose binding lectin pathway. So we will be more uh, concentrated on this classical pathway. So how does classical pathway occur? As we said before, it is activated when an antigen, when an antibody binds onto an antigen. That is antigen antibody complex activates the complement system. So the different types of proteins as I mentioned before which are numbered from 1 to 9. So the first protein is C1. So an antigen antibody complex will activate this C1 protein. And this activated C1 will in turn activate C4 to form or it will cleave the C4 protein to form C4B and C4A. It will also cleave C2 to produce C2A and C2B. So here the C4A and C2B will float away but C2A and 4B will form a complex together 
and they will in turn convert C3 to activated C3B. C3A will float away. Okay. Next, all these three, that is C4B, 2A and 3B, these together they are called the C5 convertase because it will convert C5 to activated C5A and C5B. C5A will float away but C5B will combine with other complement proteins like C6, C7, C8 and C9 to form this, this complex that is C5B6789 complex which is a membrane attack complex and this in turn will, will form, will attack the membrane of the pathogen and destroy it. Okay, so this is how antigen and antibody complex will activate the complement system in order to kill the pathogen. So this is the complement, classical pathway. Now we said that there is another method of activating the complement system which is the alternative pathway, right? In alternative pathway, this part is not there. That means to activate C3 to C3B, there is direct activation by a protein called properidin which when it combines with the bacterial polysaccharide. So properidin is a circulating uh, compound that when that combines with the bacterial polysaccharide it can directly still convert C3 to C3B. So this is how the alternative pathway will work. Right? So that is about complement system. Now we will see some applied aspects of humoral immunity. First one is allergy. So if the antibody responses are hyperreactive then what will happen we will have allergy so that is uh, one aspect of humoral immunity second is autoimmune diseases so all our lymphocytes are actually programmed to ignore any self antigens but when antibodies are produced against self antigens that will form autoimmune diseases okay so antibodies against self antigens lead to formation of autoantibodies which causes autoimmune diseases Next is monoclonal antibodies. So what are monoclonal antibodies? These are antibodies produced from a single clone of B cells or plasma cells that are used for immunotherapy of different diseases or also to prevent rejection of transplanted cells. So monoclonal antibodies are synthetic antibodies which are produced for the treatment of different diseases as well as to prevent rejection. So these are some uh, applied aspects that you can write when humoral immunity is asked as a short note. So to sum up, when a question like a short note on uh, humoral immunity is asked, you can start with an introduction and then write about the development of lymphocytes, then the different steps of activation of the humoral immunity, uh, what, is, what happens when complement system is activated, next the different types of humoral response and the applied aspects. So I hope the concept is clear. Thank you.